Right, welcome to another Disney Infinity 3.0 tutorial. In this clip, I'm going to show you how to use a Rebel Transporter. It's a thing you can unlock in the Rise of the Empire, and if you look at the property settings on here, all we can do with it is link it to a path, there's nothing else. And if you've played that level, what you'll notice is you've got this red uh, doorway where you can load people up before it takes away. I'm just going to put a person here on the screen, just going to chuck him in here at the moment. And what I'm going to show you is that if we pick this individual up, you think you can throw him into the transporter, but you can't. So they trick you. You use that in a game, but in your toy box, it can't do that. So basically, what I'm going to show you in this clip is how to make that doorway work. And by throwing three people into the doorway, that transport will then take off after three have been populated. So that is the object of this clip. So what I'm first going to do is get rid of this transporter and show you first all the little elements I'm going to need to get this thing to work. So let's delete this off. Uh, and let's create a few objects. The first thing here is that when we get this thing to start, I'd like it to generate a number of people that I need to go and save and load in a transporter. So you saw I used one of these particular characters. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go back to my uh, creativity toys uh, and I'm gonna show you a flaw now with the uh, friend generator. So if I just create a button here, let's bring a button to test the option to trigger the, the game set off. Okay, and then I'm going to move across and you have a, um, a friend generator, something you can appear to appear later in the screen. Now, like I've shown on the other clips, if you use the actual, the full generator effect, so we go here and do the friend wave generator, you can get three or four appear in one go. So I'm just going to set this wave generator up to have some individuals appear in the mountain for me to rescue. So if I do my tool, when I press that button, can I then point to my friend generator and generate wave. If I go to the property of my uh, friend generator, I can go down to the settings and configure the wave. And what I'm now going to do is just add some individuals. So you know like with the enemy one, we added some stormtroopers. Here we can now add good guys and you'll see there's quite a large list. Now, although the little guys are quite good, I prefer the characters that fit in in, um, in fitting with my character, with your your ones on the screen. So I tend to go for the larger larger guys. So I'm just going to pick a few of these. But what I then notice on this that the only ones you can tend to pick up are the small ones, and then the odd few people here and there. So I'll bring in Jar Jar Binks, which is very annoying. So I'll just do that group for for an example and we'll uh, come back out there and then we'll just press that button so we get these people and these are the people I need to put into the transporter so just wait for a few seconds come on oh here they come right so if we go up to her Miss Marvel I can't do anything with her she she doesn't do so basically they are purely for us there's nothing I can do with these characters when the small guys appear they're great I can pick those up and I can lob them so they're the ones I can throw into the transporter and Jar Jar Binks, we can just throw off a cliff, yeah. But the what I, the characters I want, I actually want to be able to pick up. So these ones are no good to me. So sadly, my friend generator is pointless. So sorry, you're gonna have to go get rid of that. That tool can't be used. So I haven't found a use for that yet. No real need for it whatsoever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own friend generator by using the replay tool. So if I go across into my tools here and get my replay wherever it is, here we go, and anyway, I put that to the side. Uh, a few of you may work, have used the replay tool and, and asked me a couple of questions, one of those things you've asked is that um, it didn't record all the settings or you couldn't use all tools, a replay tool will play back anything that you do. So if I stand on it long enough and press the X button, I'm now recording and anything I put in will be played back. So I'm just going to go to my Toy Origins and I'm going to go to uh, the Rise Against the Empire and I'm going to click on Wedge and I'm going to click on the next character. Oh, before I do the next character actually, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this person and I'm going to change the properties of the individual. Because what I'm going to say here is, let's say if they've been injured and I've got rescue them, I could put them as fainted so they're, they're collapsed and they're passed out. And what this shows you is that with the replay tool, it even records the setting when they appear. So I just want to show you, not only can you drop objects in, you can also uh, change the settings as well. So I'll bring these two other characters in on the screen. So I've got one there. So they're my three people that I have to go and rescue. And one of them is injured and I've got them passed out. So if I now go back to my replay, I stand on top of it. 
the control panel will appear, press X to stop recording. Now that I've stopped recording, now I test it. Clear the option, they've disappeared, circle play back, they play back, and if you look in the top corner, he plays back and then he passes out, so all those settings stay with it. So I've now got that generated. When it's time for them to appear, it will now get my three characters I need to go and rescue. Right, so let's now add the other tools now that I need to uh, get the rest of this to work. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to put a transporter on that particular list. So let's go and get back to my original toys. And let's pull a few of these other items in. All right. So we go through here. Right, the couple of toys I'm going to use to get this thing to work. I'm going to need my path creator. Okay, this is quite important actually because obviously this is the, where the thing flies off and this is probably the best tool you can ever use and I'll preach this constantly in all my clips. But we'll just, we'll put it here, here and I'm not going to do a particularly fancy journey. You can play around with this and make this look good and disappear in the sky and make it as far as possible you want. I'm just quite crudely just quick, just doing a straight line for this shuttle to take off just to give you the effect that it's taken off on the screen. So we'll just do it far enough so it, it has gone off the screen. Now the thing I am going to do differently here, on a couple of clips when I've shown you this, especially with the retreating from an Imperial attack, I switched this replayer off. Now the problem you've got there is you may want to replay it, so I'm not actually going to switch this, uh, sorry not the replay, the path tool, I'm not actually going to switch this off. So for this example, I'm going to leave this path tool on. Yeah. So if I go to the properties of that box, go to the square buttons and go down to the path properties, I tend to switch that off, do my connection, and then switch it back on. In this instance, I'm going to leave it on. Yeah, I will switch those on, but I'm going to leave this particular on. Uh, we may dabble with that speed a bit like moment at the moment, but at this present moment, I'm going to leave that permanently switched on. Right, so what we're going to do now, uh, let's get back and let's um, go back to my toy origins and let's put the transporter in. There we go, there it is. Right, so let's turn the transport around. I'm just going to move it slightly away from the where I need the place so it's not in the way. Now I've got the transporter, let's link that transporter to our path. And as soon as I do that, because I haven't switched it off, it will, will go. Now in this case I haven't got a problem with that, because this allows me to replay certain missions again and again. So I'm just going to connect this up. Uh, connect that to it and it will automatically start to move. And I'm going to let it play. Now what I'm going to do is, is play around with the speed. So if I go to properties, go to the path tool, I'm going to set that to 300. Okay, that's quite, I think that's the fastest you can do it. Not 3, I want it 300. Whoops, my mistake. I'm going to make sure it goes along the, the, uh, the path so it's the same route. And I'm also going to play it so it plays and stops. So it's not going to loop, just play one way and then stops. So that will now carry on going across the screen. If I come out there, that one I carry on going up. Now I can speed that faster, that's the object of the group, but then I can also make it go 300 on all objects. So if I change the properties of the path, I can change that to 300 and that will give you a much faster, faster group. So theoretically you get it going at 600 on speed. Yeah. But I'm going to leave that left the scene because when we trigger this off, it's going to reset those items. So I'm going to leave those items on. So I leave it gone, I'm happy for that at the moment. Right, now I'm going to go back to my creativity toys and bring in the other objects that I need. Now, on here, I'm just going to go this group. This is going to be our doorway. And as you'll notice, we've seen, you've seen these ones. You've got the woods where you've got the door. You've got the well. You chuck an object in. And in your Guardian of the Galaxy, you've got this doorway. And this doorway is perfect because it's the perfect size for that red spot. So what you'll notice here, you see where the green dot is, where it picks the center of the transporter. I'm going to position that there and you'll notice I'm going to move it across. Now I put one of these square mats down because it happens to be exactly that width. It helped me line it up but I'm going to position that, that, that gateway there and that is where I'm going to throw my individuals in. But when the transporter's in and you'll see later it fits perfectly over the red spot which is quite handy. Okay so that's going to be my doorway that I find my individuals, chuck it in, get three pull, you pull in and it'll take off. So I now need some other tools here and surprisingly, I'm going to use a logic gate. Okay. Where is my... I need a, sorry, I need a counter first. So I need a counter to count how many people I've got in. That's firstly important, sorry. I do need a logic gate somewhere as well. 
Where's my logic gate? Dynamic trigger. Where are you? Yeah, the next one. I need a logic gate. I'll explain that one in a second. And then I need a repeater as well. Now, the reason for the logic gate is that if I set the button to trigger the signal, the button is purely for me to test it. So when I finish with it, I can take the button off, and all I then have to do is link my rest of my triggers to point to the gate, and that will get the rest of the items going. So let's change our, our counter that we put in here. And in the property of this counter, so wand on the object, I'm going to set it that when I get the counter to three. Yeah, so I'm going to set the target to be three on that list. Okay. Now the logic connection is when I reach that target, yeah, so when I do the reach that target, I'm going to go over to my green option, which I can now see because it's not in the way. And what I'm going to do is, can you reset and play? So wherever the vehicle is, it come back and play it again. Okay. Right, now if I go to the option, how do I increase that counter? Will I go to this pot here? So if I go into the properties of this particular item, one of the things is it says remove town people entry, it's set to no. So if I don't do that, I'll chuck them in and then it will throw it back out. So I do want to remove that off. And the second property was when you chuck someone in, disable the door. I do not want to disable the door, I want to still use it. So if I go to the properties of that and say when a town person is thrown in, can you increase our counter by one? So increment our counter by one, so it counts how many times those items have gone in. Now the one thing you'll also notice at the door, the door is permanently switched off. It's not like an on button, it's not always on. So this is why I needed the repeater. So what I've got here is I need this repeater on here, so I look at the properties, it says every five seconds. I think I'm gonna change that to three. Okay, but when you go open that gate, you have to power it up or generate these items. So I've just got repeated. Say on repeat, can you activate that doorway? Okay, and activate door. And now all I've got to do is link these all to my logic gate. So when I press this button, that button for me to test this particular moment, I'm going to use that logic gate to fire a signal through. Now, like I said, when I finish the game, I'll delete that button, and then whatever triggers this stage of the event, all I've got to do is fire one signal to that logic gate, and the rest of it's set up. I don't have to set up all the other movements in. So I use my logic gate as like um, a starting block for my rest of my code so I can piece it together. So what I'm doing here is I'm now connecting these items up, saying, right, so input a signal on the button, and on the output, what I'd like you to do here is, on the output, first thing I want you to do is to reset this section here and the reset and stop so it brings the object back, so it flies it back onto the screen. I also like to play my replay, so I've got my replay tool going. So on the output, I've, can you do the replay? And also on output, can you then tell the uh, repeater to start? So again, on all the output signals, this is all set up. So on output here, can we get it to play my replayer and can you do playback? And anything recorded is played back. So the settings, property settings. So we are ready to go to give this option a, a test. So let's take the wand off, press the button and let's give it a go. So when I press the button, it triggers a signal, everything returns back. So my three people are there, I'll do it so I can go get to them. I'll use my um, jetpack, because Boba Fett is by far the coolest character. Now if you look, as I pick these guys up, look at the entrance, it covers perfectly into the ship. You wouldn't even tell that it wasn't part of the ship. Because I've used the uh, Pathfinder, it places it over the top. So I increment the items three times, chuck them all in. Hey presto, and away it goes. Bit bumpy, need to probably play with the part a bit better. And the ship has escaped, I've, I've loaded up my transporter. And if I want to do another group, or save another set of group of people, press the button now, it will reset all the levels, my people reappear, and I can repeat the process again. But if you look, the way I position that gate, it now looks like it's part of the transporter. It's not separated, it fits inside it, which is quite cool. Get my last guy. Oh, missed him. But that's basically this clip to show you how to use this little doorway, load your transporter in, when you get enough people into the transporter while you're under attack or rescue them, the, you've saved them and you've saved the day. I hope you find this clip to be of use. Uh, 
keep a lookout for some more clips on the way. Thanks for watching.